Welcome to Airbus A320 cockpit. In this video, we will explain various components and indicators installed in the cockpit. We will also explain the purpose of various controls that you can see here. So let's get started. This is the captain instrument panel. You can see various knobs and switches here. The left and the right knob at the top controls the brightness of PFD and ND. They can also be used to turn off the display when they are not in use. In the middle you have the PFD20 transfer button. In the bottom right we have foot warmers, you can turn them on and off. And this is the console for brightness control. And from here you can control the loudspeaker. This is the navigation display. You can see various arcs here. At the bottom center you can see a graph symbol. This is VR1, VR2 pointers and GPS primary is written here which means that GPS is basically the primary mode of navigation for this aircraft. At the top you can see a compass which is basically telling you the heading of the aircraft. Right now the ND is in the arc mode so weather radar returns can also be displayed on the navigation display. These various colors are corresponding to the returns or the weather which the aircraft is uh, receiving in front of its nose. The red color means that uh, there is a very strong weather in front of the aircraft. On the glare sheet panel, we have this uh, IFES control panel. From here, you can change the modes and the range to be displayed on the ND. So, let me change the range and show you what happens at the ND. You can see these cyan colored range indicators will change when I will change the range. Basically the actual range of the weather radar is not changed. It is just changing the range to be displayed on the navigation display. You can see it's 20, 30. Now it has been reduced to 5 and 7.5. You can also change the modes of ND. Right now this is the full 360D compass mode. This is the VOR mode where you can see the VOR pointers as well.
we can also change the source of navigation from uh, VOR to ADF which stands for automatic direction finder from this switch so I'm turning it towards the ADF and you will see that uh, on the lower left side of the ND VOR has been replaced by ADF1 next to the ND we have PFD which stands for primary flight display the blue color is representing the sky and the brown color is representing ground whereas aircraft symbol is at the horizon it also tells you the roll angle of the aircraft and the pitch angle of the aircraft it can also display a lot of other information such as the altitude, vertical speed, ground speed, localizer deviation, glide slope deviation whether you are moving fast or slow the detailed working of IFE system will be covered in our upcoming videos this is ISIS which means integrated standby instrument systems it is intended to serve as a backup in case of failure of uh, standard glass corporate instrumentation it allows the pilot to continue to receive key flight related information the ISIS combines the function of altimeter, airspeed indicator and attitude indicator which were previously being used as a backup in cockpit. This is the digital distance radio magnetic indicator. On the center instrument panel, you can see these two big screens which corresponds to the ECAM system, electronic centralized aircraft monitoring system. This is the upper display unit of the ECAM, also called upper ECAM, where various information is being displayed right now about the engines. The left column is for the engine number one, and the right column is for the engine number two. You can read various engine parameters here, for example, N1 and EGT for engine number two here and N1 and EGT for engine number 1 here. The EGT is currently 49 degrees centigrade because the engine is shut down. Similarly, N2 rotation and fuel flow in kilogram per hour is also displayed here. The upper display unit shows the information in descriptive form. It also tells you various warnings and uh, messages that can be displayed in the lower part. The lower display unit corresponds to the synoptic diagrams. This is called a lower display unit or lower ECAM. By default, it is set to show you the door page of the aircraft. The left and right emergency slide indication is there. Green boxes are telling you that all doors are closed, while this amber indication is telling you that cabin door is open right now. Now, let me show you the ECAM control panel on the central pedestal panel. This is the ECAM control panel from where you can select various pages to be displayed on the ECAM display units. We will cover more about ECAM in our upcoming videos. Next on the center instrument panel we have landing gear, control and indication. The three triangles are telling you that the three landing gears are down and in lock position. This is a digital clock. The first window is telling you the reading for the stopwatch. The second one is the UTC time and the third one is telling you the elapsed time. This is the landing gear lever currently in the down position. After takeoff, the pilot set them into the up position so that the landing gears can be retracted. Next to it you can see the triple indicator. This is basically ACCU pressure. We'll talk about this in detail in our upcoming videos. This is the multifunction control and display unit. Under this we have the audio control panel. Remote man radio management panel, 
lighting panel and the weather radar control panel these are the engine starting controls similarly we have communication and navigation panel for the FO on the right side this is the complete center pedestal panel these are the pitch trim wheels and these are the engine throttle levers for left and right engine This is the landing gear gravity extension. In case normal landing gear extension system fails, then you can pull and rotate it a number of time to extend the landing gears. This is the flap control lever. This is the radio management panel and audio control panel. This lever controls the ground spoiler. It has three position retarded half and full and it provides speed brake on ground. Currently it is in the armed position. This is cockpit door control. You can unlock the cockpit door from this. This is the rudder trim knob. You can turn it towards the left or right to trim the nose left or right. And in the left side there is a digital display which is telling you the number of degrees you have uh, trimmed the nose. It can also be reset using the button under it. And this is the parking brake handle. You need to pull and turn it to apply the parking brakes. Here is something very interesting about this aircraft, this uh, joystick. You won't see any kind of control column here. This is a joystick, let me throw some light over it. You can see a red button on it. It's not an autopilot disconnect button, it's basically a priority switch. Let me take over the priority from the first officer side. Priority right. Now the first officer will have priority on the joystick movements. If the captain wants to take the control, he will need to press this button. This is a tiller for nose wheel steering. And behind that we have some space available where captain and pilots can place their manuals and other books. Here we have the oxygen mask for the captain. These are the side windows. This is the overhead panel. Many aircraft systems can be controlled electrically from uh, these switches and buttons in the overhead panel. This is the overhead circuit breaker panel.
we will explain the working of these switches and buttons in the overhead panel in our upcoming video. It's time to release the aircraft, so I'm signing off. I hope you like this video.